Hi friends, welcome back. In this video, we are going to cover answers for the Verilog quiz, which were posted in the community tab of VLSI Excellence YouTube channel. So now let's get started. So the first Verilog quiz was, does the order of input and output ports in the argument of module matters? So now let's assume that we have a module, let's call it module and my module and here we have few ports, suppose one is input A port, then we have input B and we have one output port which is output C. Okay, so this is how our module is declared. Now, if I change the order of these input output ports, let's assume I will put the output C here and the input here. Basically, the first port of this module now will become output C and the third port of this module will become input A. So, if I do this change, will it matter? So now let's take one scenario. So the scenario here is we are going to instantiate this my module in a top level Verilog HDL file. So when we are going to instantiate this module in that particular top level module, we are basically having two options of instantiation and which are called instantiation by name and by position. So instantiation by name means we are, so when we are going to instantiate this module, the instantiation of this module will look like this. So in the top level file, we will have our my module and here then the instantiation, let's call it DUT and then we are going to instantiate it in two ways. One is by name. So in by name, what we will do, we will we, we will make use of the dot. So we will be using dot and then a and the net which is present at top level file that net will come here. And likewise we will have b and that dot uh, that na net name which is present at top level and then we will have dot c and again the name. So this is how we will instantiate it in the top level module. This is the one way. The another way could be DUT, the module name of course, then DUT and we can directly instantiate by the position, which is suppose in the top level module, our nets are X, Y and Z, which are basically going to connect to these module ports. So here we will be, suppose here, this is X, this is Y and here we have our Z. So this is one way where we are instantiating by using the dot operator and then the another way of instantiation is by using the position which is directly DUT and XYZ. So if we are instantiating this my module in the top level very low HDL module by using this dot operator method then the order of the input output ports in this my module is not going to make any effect or the order of input output ports in the my module is not going to have any effect. But if we are instantiating this my module in the top level module by using the position way of instantiating here our order of input output ports in the my module is going to affect. Here we need to remember that which is our first port, which is our second port and which is our third port or basically which are our input ports and which are our output ports. So the answer of this quiz questions could be both yes and no. So I hope th this particular quiz question is clear. So now let's see what are your answers which you have provided. So here we have the 11 votes. So 11 people have answered this very low quiz question and here I am going to show you the answers. So here are the answers 
55% people have answered as yes and 45% people have answered as no. Now our second Verilog quiz question is which of the following loops are supported by Verilog. So the answer of this quiz question is all of the above. So the Verilog supports if else loop also it supports for loop and while loop. But I want to make one important point here related to the while loops. So if you want to understand the very low loops in more details i have a dedicated video already uploaded in the dlsi excellence youtube channel and here you can basically go through this video i will provide the link of this video to the description section of this particular video and Related to the while loops, the while loops are basically not recommended for synthesizable RTL code because when we synthesize the RTL code, it basically turns into gates or registers and the synthesizer needs to know exactly how many times the loop will execute. But in while loop, the, the statement of or the syntax of while loop is while expression execute some statements. So until this expression is true, this loop is continuously going to execute. So Verilog supports while loop also, but while loops are basically not recommended for synthesizable RTL. Yes, of course they can be easily used for Verilog test page. So now let's see your answer. So again here we have 11 votes and if you see 82% of you have selected the correct answer which is all of the above. Now let's see our third very low quiz question. So our third question is one particular pitfall is the accidental production of fill in the blank rather than deflip flow as storage elements. So basically when we are modeling a deflip flow, let's let's approach this question like this. Suppose we are modeling a deflip flow but accidentally it turns into something else. So basically when we are modeling a deep flip flow, what is the possibility that instead of deep flip flow, it results into something else. So the answer of this question is, it basically results in a latch. And what is that condition when it results into a latch? So basically when we are modeling a deep flip flow, we will always use the procedural block which is always and here we will put positive edge probe or negative edge reset basically edge detected variables and then we will see assign q equal to d so this is how we basically model a d flip flow but if here we do not put the add sensitive variables this block will result in a d latch if you want to understand more on procedural blocks and how they realized into the digital components i have already uploaded few video tutorials on vlsi excellence channel and i will provide the link the full playlist link in the description section of this video now let's see the fourth verilog which question so our fourth verilog which question is which of the following is true about parameters so the first is so the first option is default size in most synthesizer is the size of an integer which is 32 bit. So basically the meaning of this is the parameter size is 32 bit. The second option is it enables Verilo code to be comfortable with VHDL. So the parameter is the concept of Verilo HDL coding and this is not to make it comfortable with VHDL. And the third option is parameters cannot accept a default value. Yes, the parameter can have its default value. And the fourth is all of the above. So which of the following is true about parameters? The parameters cannot accept a default value that is not correct. The parameter can have a default value and it enables Visual Code to be comfortable with VHDL. So this is also not correct. Parameters are not to Mac very low in uh, compatible with VHDL, but parameters have their different purpose, which is basically to make our design parameterized. And the default size of parameters is 32 bit. So yes, the correct answer is this one, first one. So here you can see that we have 14 votes. For 14 of you have voted for this quiz question, and the answer of this quiz question is 71% of you have answered it correctly which is the default size of parameter is 32 bit and the answers for quiz number 3 
is latch which is 91 percent of you have answered it correctly now let's see the fifth very low quiz question and the fifth question is which of the following is a difference between a function and a task so the first option is a function can, can call another function a task cannot so this is not correct a function can call another function which is correct but a task can also call another function or an another task the second option is a function cannot call a task a task can call another task so that is definitely correct a function cannot call a task that is correct a task can call another task that is also correct and the third option is a function has one or more inputs a task has no inputs that is not correct yes a function has one or more inputs but a task can also have one or more inputs the fourth option is a function argument may be an output if that is incorrect a function argument cannot be an output a function only has input arguments and the default output argument of a function is nothing but the function name itself and a task may only have an input that is not correct a task can have both input and outputs so if you have not gone through the task and function tutorials which i have already covered you can go through that and so I have covered both of the Verilog tasks and functions in the Verilog tutorial series on VLSI excellence and you can basically go through and understand the functions and tasks in more details. So here the answer of this quiz question is B. A function cannot call a task, a task can call another task. Now let's see your answers. Six of you have voted for this quiz question and out of that 83% of you have answered it correctly. So I hope the first 5 will of which answers are clear to you. If you have any doubts please write down in the comment section. Also if you like this video please hit the like button and do not forget to subscribe this channel and press the bell icon so that you would get notified as soon as I upload the next which questions answer. Thank you very much.